it's banished from Alpha Forever here and it's AF Nodding number 31. If you follow us on the social media you probably have seen our piano patch, which I've built recently and uh, I pretty much like it, it sounds like a piano, probably you can hear it in the background. And uh, since I did this patch in our latest version which is not public yet, I have to rebuild it because we are not downwards compatible. So if I want to share this piano with you, I have to rebuild it anyways. So this nodding session is going to be a bit different. I'm going to redo something that I've done before. And uh, I hope it's going to be interesting because I can explain stuff while I'm nodding. And without further ado, let's jump into it. And yeah, on the right side you can see the uh, of forever effect which is the latest version and you can see that there's some extra stuff there and uh, on the left side you can see the current version I uh, have this visible because probably I'm gonna switch between the two tracks anyways um, first things first I'm deleting everything as usual and recreate everything probably the same notes that I'm deleted anyways we have a gain in in the end, and we have a MIDI note node where everything starts from. But uh, I'm probably we are happy that we have this trigger output. But uh, in the current uh, development build, which is uh, I think it's the sixth or seventh of September, this trigger output is buggy. So if it's polyphon, if, if you are using it in polyphonic mode, you probably will encounter some glitches, so I'm avoiding it for the time being, because I'm taking care of our users and I do not wanna fool them. And <laughs> and then we are using this, uh, the old school method of multiplying the gate with its changed value. And from here on we have an envelope follower. And for the time being, I'm only using one envelope follower because of this uh, second one is only for the reverberation, which we are going to do. But since it, it's not a real reverb, we can, it's a fake one. So uh, oh, we have something here. Yeah, a stack key. Cool. So I don't care about this for the time being. So I'm going just to go and multiply the output of this uh, envelope by the velocity because of uh, piano is velocity dependent for sure and as far as I see that's what happened here this coin should origin from the velocity and it does and this goes into the scope which I only did put here for the sake of that video and uh, on this ad, I'm, I'm going to put this the ad here, but I'm not going to connect anything to it because it's only the envelope follower of the reverb there. And after this, I'm, we have a multiplication and a white noise source. And if we take a listen to it, put the cone here so the, later on things will be easier to connect there. Take the volume down so. I don't make you deaf, so if I hit a key on my MIDI keyboard, we have a click. If I turn the release higher, it's simple white noise, so I don't think that's a wonder. So we are here. Most of the patch is done. <laughs> cool. Uh, actually, this piano is not as complex as it looks like. We, here we have a limit P. Uh, thing uh, where the in input is called stiffness. So we are going to build this what's inside there. It's just a simple if statement. Anyways, let's do it. Let's call this limit p. So we are limiting the pitch. So the input is going to be the pitch. We are adding 12 to it, which Maybe we won't in the end. Anyways, I, I do what I did. And if this and if this value is bigger than the B input, 
which is going to be the stiffness, so I call it STF. Then we output the stiffness as we output the, the value of that part and the output is the encode PLM, so limited pitch. So we add 12 to the pitch, one octave higher, and then if we check if this uh, value is higher than the thing called stiffness, if it's higher then we output the stiffness, so we are limiting the pitch here. And uh, this is going to be important later on. But we, we have this thing here, so we can connect the pitch here. Excuse, not that, but this. That's the pitch. Can align that there. And here, from the multiplication, we go straight into a, a state variable filter. I didn't follow the same structure, but I don't think it matters too much. And from there, we go into this division from the low pass filter. So we divide by the resonance as we used to. And the resonance goes between 0.001 and 12. And uh, this parameter is called brightness. And if we take a listen to this now, we will have a filter. The, I set this to the same value, so this is between 0 and 150. And we are on about here. And we are about there. We can hear that it's simply a white noise filtered. So it's a low pass filter on, on the previous white noise. So nothing too special. And the next thing we want to do is to multiply this by 6. That's only for the, uh, making it louder. And we go into one pole filter. Which gets the pitch of the PLM of this limited pitch. And we use the low pass output. That's fine. And uh, I think I can even already create the stiffness variable or controller. And the range of the stiffness was between 0 and 128. And uh, the value I liked was uh, 6080. So somewhere around here. Yeah, that should be fine. And here we go into the strings. Probably this is the most complex part of this whole thing. We have three strings, as a piano has three strings. I know lower notes do not have three, they have only one, but they are wider. But anyways, this works for me. And if you look inside the string, we can see that it's not even that complex. Sorry, I was clicking twice, so it's not a too complex thing. Actually, this is close to a car plus strong patch. So I create a string. And I add an input. We will feed something back. We will have a delay. We will have a multiplication and we will have some dampening for sure. And the output is going to be the low pass filter. Something or I, I just created an output here by pressing O above this, but I don't know where I did put the output. Oh, I did put the output to the addition, so we are going to plug it there and call it out. 
and something will come back and it's going to look like a feedback so I, I make it look like a feedback like this and uh, yeah this is a basic uh, structure for uh, home filters and let's see what we have here uh, we have a pitch input which is going to come into the delay so I call this P I just simply press the I above the, the input plug of the delay and I want to convert this pitch to milliseconds so pitch to milliseconds in earlier version we have to do this manually now we don't have to do it anymore and I subtract uh, I'll shift this stack again I subtract one from the sam uh, one sample length from this uh, thing. I, I will do this later on, but no, I do it now. And uh, oh, not from here, sorry. From here. So we are going to subtract the length of a sample from this delay because uh, feedbacks generate one sample delay. And this way, uh, higher notes will be detuned. So I put this here. I call this sem. And this way, we are sure that the uh, things won't sound out to tune. And then we go into an opus filter. So I put an opus filter after the delay. It receives the same delay time, and uh, yeah, the feedback time is zero here, but I know that it's not on everyone. And from then we go to multiplication. And the input of the multiplication is uh, simply to uh, a crossfade between two values, and it's dependent of the gate on the gate. So if the gate is active, we are going to have a high value, like 0.999. If the gate is low, we are going to have a low value. And as an input, we are going to use the gate. So, until the gate is on, the release is going to be long. And when we let it go, the sound will go silent. And this envelope follower is only used to uh, to smooth this transition between these two feedback values or we can get clicks. So I put an envelope follower modulated here and crank it to the about to the same value as there. Oh going in and out always, sorry. And here the pitch is set to the damping is set to a value that I like. So this is going to be between zero and uh 150 and we go up to about the same value and we are about there this is fine for me and here we go we are ready with the string so we have one string um, actually the order of the plex is different so I'm going to create this same input again so it gets to the bottom this way it's a bit nicer Cool. So we have a string. I can plug the input of the, the output of this opus filter, uh, low pass filter inside of it, and I create an add eight node, and the output goes there. So let's see uh, what the pitch input is going to be like. And it's it comes from the uh, limited. No, it, it shouldn't be the limited, but it is. Oh yeah. String gets the limited. No, it doesn't. Yeah, the pitch is a simple pitch, so it's not limited. So what uh, we can do is to drag this here, create a con here, press S above the input plug, and we can call this P. So we know that this is the pitch. This is why, this is why cons are handy that they have a header. Whereas they could be an input and output, but this way we can name them, even if it's a bit disturbing sometimes, but I like that I can name it and I can know what it is. So 
so we have the pitch there. We can also plug the gate into the gate input like this and create a cone here. And I call this G, so gate. And uh, if I hit a key now. This already sounds somewhat like a piano, only because of the filtering that happens before. And uh, really nothing else. This is almost a simple Capro Strong patch. Uh, yeah, I, I spent lots of time with this. This uh, limiting the, the P is very important. So this uh, this is the node that I was missing. I, I was spent, I was spent really uh yes <laughs> creating a piano and then i'm happy with this uh, but i didn't set this to polyphonic so i set it okay and uh, we have this semi input and if i hit a low key that's nice uh, one octave higher that's nice too one octave higher almost oh very very out of tune way too out of tune so we have to to get the sample length somehow and it's not hard we just have to use the reciprocal of the sample rate and multiply it by thousand so i call this sample and i use the sample rate node and multiply the reciprocal by 1000 and use the output as milliseconds because this is in milliseconds and drag it here, align it. Ah, I call this sem because that's sem is connected to sem now. And now, if I do the same again, nice one octifier, one octifier. So it's in tune now, and that's that's important because you wanna play this like an instrument, and yeah. So this is one string, two strings, three strings. Align them to, to the left. Back things to where they are, and what we wanna do is to. Uh, Use the same input on all of them. At least I did use the same input. Plug it here and plug this there. And same gate here and there. And we want to add to the pitch and subtract here. And we are going to insert the pitch here and there. And what we want to do is to create a knob, call it detune here and there. So we are detuning the strings. And we want to also connect the sample lengths like this. Voila. We have this uh, thing ready and 0.001 and 24. And if we take a listen, it's not allowed because we're doing the same thing three times. So let's see what I did differently in string one. I gave the opus filter a feedback value of 0.1 and it changed the release times it's a different thing it has different parameters it's just a matter of taste and it's a bit lower it's the, the damping is a bit stronger fine let's see the string two what's different there uh, 
I give the opacity filter a value of 0.2. And this, we will have to do something with the mouse clicks. It's an issue anyway, so I've recorded it already to the tasks. Uh, it's only 125, the... Yeah, this should be fine. And that's our... We have the three strings. Actually, if I'm not multiplying here by six, but only by two, I should be fine. As you can see, the DTU knob had some different curves, so I gave it a different curve. This way it's, it's more intuitive, I think. And this sounds pretty close to a piano already. I only need a few filters in the end. So we have two state variables here, or two P filters. So one two P filter and the second one. The first one is using the high pass output and the second one the low pass output, which is divided by the resonance. And the resonance is simply eight on the second one. Like this, and here's some complex thing which I don't know what it is exactly, but we will figure it out soon. I know that this low cut is using maybe the the limited pitch. So we can drag this here. And what are we adding to it? I really don't remember anymore. Oh, this knob. So yeah, the low cut knob seems reasonable. Because we are cutting those here. And it's in one octave range. So from the limited pitch, we are going to one octave higher. And the resonance is simply three. I don't know why, this is what I like. And yeah, the second one uh, receives the limited pitch again. Move this lower. Okay, and uh, yeah, the limited pitch comes here. Can I call this prelim? I can. And uh, what comes there is velocity dependent again. So I use a crossfader, drag it here, and the low value is going to be 12, the high, the high value is going to be 64. And I think I need to get the velocity from somewhere. Yeah, it's simply the velocity. So it comes like this. Nice. So actually, I think that we are almost done, there's only a high pass filter in the end. So uh, after the division we have a one pole filter and it's receiving this line should be the pitch maybe. Yeah, it receives simply the pitch. 
So I can take this from here. And I think it's the it's the that's the final stage. Yeah, there was an add node before it, but I didn't use that. So nice. And uh, what we have is uh, inner rever reverberation so with an, another envelope follower. It gets the same trigger, and uh, yeah, one more thing. There's a trigger to gate node before the envelope followers, and the gate comes as an input into both envelope followers because the attack is not a straight line, it should be a bit, uh, yeah curved. So I give it a bit of uh, attack time like 10 milliseconds or 9 milliseconds and uh, plug the uh, time, so the modulated time into the attack input of both envelope followers and turn on turn the modulation all up. And uh, Yeah. Here I did add 12 to the pitch anyways. It's because of we have one octave lower than a normal piano in this synth. Because of the opus filters are in the feedback loop. And this is The transients are much more natural because of these uh, triggered gate and the attack. And uh, the final thing is that we are not using this envelope yet, but now we will. I give it a bit additional attack and I'm going to multiply it by, by the velocity, which is used here. And then I'm going to create a reverb strength and plug it there. So the reverb is just a different envelope for the noise which we add to the original envelope. Could also use a different noise here if you want to. And this way we can shape the frequency spectrum of this uh, reverb with a low pass filter and simply simply add this noise to the other one. I like that you can always enhance your patches and you can always have new ideas of what you can do. So yeah, this is a damper. Oh, let's see the still that did that. Actually, I like this. And we can also add the hypers filter there, because why not? Use the hi.
We will blow cat. And uh, we have one more thing here, it's called sustain. And uh, these node is only meant for people who are using a sustain pedal, which I don't have here currently, but uh, the Moonlight Sonata MIDI I was using has it, it used it. so. I inserted this sustain node, our designer. Actually, the sustain pedal is not uh, supported currently by Alpha Forever directly, but there's a workaround and you can build it for yourself. It's, uh, it's really not that hard, and once you have this patch, it's good for most situations. I can imagine pretty rare uh, situations where it doesn't work especially on Hammond organ style brain. But uh, a part of that, this should be fine. So we take the gate in, uh, and feed it into a variable. And the variable is tracking for the change of something. And it's uh, the MIDI CC. Uh, and if the MIDI CC is going to be higher than 0.5, then we are all putting one here as zero, and we have to look here for the MIDI CC. And the most common thing for a sustain is MIDI CC 64. And uh, this change is, all, is all, also going into the uh, crossfit, and this is the sustain. So we are we are all only remembering when the change happens. Oh no, this comes here. Sorry. It goes there. So you can see it better. Sorry. We have to make these clicks a lot uh, more, uh, a lot less responsive because I'm always double clicking and Nice set. So yeah, this is the way the sustain patch looks. And uh, all we have to do is to, we have the gate there. Plug it here. And whatever uses the gate. I think here we have a G con. I can plug it there, align it, and we are ready with the piano. So that's all. So you can see the new patch is a more a lot better organized than my old one. And uh, yeah, it works. It works nicely. And yeah, the most most important thing is this uh, pitch limiting thing because uh, it's now on sixty. If I turn it higher, we get a harsher sound. But if I move a lot higher. That's not a piano anymore. But if we limit the, the stiffness, so this was the key that I didn't find. I was always trying to create a extreme curves and uh, cut off resonance settings and. Uh, it was completely wrong. This works uh, nicely without 
doing too much and I think it sounds nice, I like it. And it, it really is just a couple strong. Maybe if you are not using the opus filters you will get the same result but uh, then everything is going to pitch one octave higher. I didn't try it yet, maybe it works. And I think uh, you can enhance this a lot uh, further if you want to. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna share this patch with you and I hope you've had fun watching this. I've spent really, really, really lots of time having a piano patch and uh, actually this was one of my motivations to 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 work in this sound design business when so yeah <laughs> I always had the idea that I can recreate acoustic instruments and I was always interested in this but uh, I'm not the guy who is writing heavy <laughs> equations and stuff like that like uh, the genius is like Julius O. Smith does I don't understand half of the things he says and but but I love the way I, I love this intuitive way to design sound so I don't think that I have to know that the uh, uh, comb filter is the same as uh, the equation of a uh, ideal string because low delay times sound like uh, an oscillator and they just repeat signals and and I can hear that it works and I can hear that uh, feeding some noise into a, a, a comb filter sounds like a guitar and I, I, I can imagine that it sounds the same way that some random thing repeats itself and then it gets an oscillator and then it gets something that that's pretty much uh, something like a physical, string, physical thing but I wouldn't call this physical modeling because uh, the people who really do physical modeling are, are really geniuses and I deeply respect them because they, they, they don't need to, uh, to experiment too much with uh, values. They, they do the math, they do the measurements and they do stuff that I never will do because I don't know how to do it but uh, I would call this something like feedback synthesis or or yeah I, I like the word feedback synthesis <laughs> anyways it's still a lot more organic than what uh, what you can achieve with uh, regular subtractive synthesis or additive synthesis yeah actually <laughs> I don't talk anymore more. I hope you will have fun with this little piano and I hope uh, you can extend it and if you can show me what you can come up with I will be more than happy. So yes guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you like this kind of content then please subscribe and support us. As you see we are working for further, we are doing developments, we they delivered the whole, whole UI and uh, you've seen it on the other editor we have text uh, fields now and I hope that you will have the new version soon it's under heavy testing as you see so once again thanks for watching and um, happy noding bye bye